So during the last class, we spent a lot of time talking about this idea of solutions and how um, we can take a, a material and plop it down into water. And once you place it into water, it dissociates into its individual ions. And those ions float around in solution. And so we have these aqueous ions dissolved in water. But that's not all. Those ions, when they interact with other ions from a different solution, can start to do other chemistry. And so those ions can come into play as well. Now, what we care about really are three basic types of reactions. Precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions, and then a slightly more exotic one, redox reactions. Those three solution reactions are probably the, the, the main ones we're going to look at. As mentioned, one of the benefits of dealing with solutions is control of this value that we call concentration. And when you deal with solutions, any solutions, it turns out that there's really only two types of concentration problems. One where you're asked to find the concentration of a solution Typically, it'll go, what is the concentration of sodium in this sample? Typical. And then you have to use your knowledge of what concentration units that they're particularly looking for. And the one we usually care about is molarity, though that's not the only concentration unit. Molarity is defined as the moles of solute per liter of solution. That's a ratio. More often than not, it is used as a, as a representation of how much stuff is in the solution. Rarely is it the actual starting point for a problem. Just keep that in mind. It's a relationship, and so it's often other information that's the starting point. So that's the first type of concentration problem. One where you're asked to find the concentration of a solution. And, and the language is very specific. What is the concentration of yada, yada, yada? The other type of solution-based problems uses the concentration and some other descriptor to find information about how much material is contained in that solution. And typically, it's a concentration and a volume together. Those two bits of information together allow us to determine how much stuff is present. Right? Uh, concentration on its own doesn't tell you how much. Uh, concentration, a solution can be very concentrated, very dilute, but you can take a lot of a dilute solution and use it to get um, the same amount of material that's in a little bit of a concentrated solution. So concentration alone is not enough. You almost always have to pair it with something else. Concentration and a volume. Now there's also a special subset of all of these problems that are dilution problems. And though dilution problems usually um, are, are sort of a combination of both of these. Alright, so let's take a look at a typical um, concentration problem. So before we get to concentration, let's actually talk about how we use concentration. Usually when we express concentration, again, we're going to speak just, just to molarity at the moment. Molarity, capital M. Again, I try to illustrate it with typing. We usually write it as a capital M, but when I'm writing it, I usually will try to underline it to distinguish it from some other random spasm of my hand that I call writing. And so we can look at this and we can talk about the molarity. So we can say that this is a 0 0.133 molar magnesium chloride solution. A 0 0.133 magne molar magnesium chloride solution. We know from the definition of what molarity is, which is moles of solute per liter of solvent, that this is equivalent to saying a 0 0.133 mole of magnesium chloride dissolved in one liter of solution. And we could say liter of magnesium chloride or liter of solution. 
Now, that information right there, as we can see, that is a conversion factor. That is an interrelationship between moles and volume. Right. We've seen something like this before. Grams related to moles. So this is where the molarity comes in. This is where the molecular weight comes in. In many ways, there's a lot of a similarity between molecular weight and molarity, though there are some substantial differences. And so we can use that information to find out information within the problem. It is a conversion factor. So oftentimes we'll represent this, the molarity of a solution. This would represent the concentration of sodium 3 chloride, or in this case, magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride concentration is equal to 0 0.133 molar. So there's some implied information in that statement. A 0 0.133 molar magnesium chloride solution. Well, we know from the balanced chemical formula that for every one magnesium ion, there are also two chloride ions. And so implied in that is that the chloride ion concentration would be equal to 0 0.266 molar because there are twice as many chloride ions as magnesium chloride molecules or magnesium chloride compounds. For every one magnesium, you get two chlorides. For every one magnesium chloride, you get two chlorides. <clears throat> now, there's a more formal way of thinking about this. If we were to say zero point, look at the stoichiometry, 0 0.133 molar, that is equivalent to saying 0 0.133 moles of magnesium chloride in one liter of solution. That means that for every one mole of magnesium chloride, that is equivalent to two moles of chloride ion. And if you do your cancellation, this cancels out the moles, cancels the moles of magnesium chloride, and you're left with moles of chloride over liters of solution, moles per liter, so that would be the chloride, and then we'd see that that works out in terms of the math, 0 0.266 molar chloride ion. That's how we'd say it. This is a 0 0.266 molar chloride ion solution. Don't confuse molar with moles. The two are very different. Why did they pick such names? Again, because chemistry is mean. All right, so let's take a look at another one. What is the concentration of aluminum in an aluminum chloride solution that is Cl with the chloride ion concentration equal to 0 0.220 molar? So what does that mean? Well, the chloride ion concentration equal to 0 0.220 molar Again, that's equivalent to saying a 0 0.22 moles per liter. So we know that if this is 0 0.220 moles of chloride in one liter of solution, for every three moles of chloride, that is equivalent to one mole of aluminum says that if you were to dissolve the aluminum chloride in solution, again, all of the uh, aluminum chloride, when it dissolves, it would release one aluminum plus three chlorides. And so we can then use this. Chlorides cancel, giving us a solution, aluminum ion concentration, equal to 0 0.0733 molar. So if we know the concentration of one ion in solution and it's tied to another via stoichiometry, we can indirectly figure them out. Right. So when you take a salt and you plunk it down into water, those ions are no longer independent of one another. So molarity, moles per liter. So 
typically, we use that information. So how do we calculate the molarity of a solution? Well, traditionally, when you calculate the molarity, you find the number of moles of the solute, find the number of liters of the solute, and you divide. Right. Those are the two steps. Find the number of moles, find the liters. What is the concentration, aka molarity, of a solution made by dissolving 0.235 grams of magnesium chloride in enough water to make a 250 milliliter solution. Right. So we have a 0.235 grams of magnesium chloride and dissolved in enough water to make a 200 milliliter, a 250 milliliter, a 250 milliliter solution. Find the number of moles, find the number of liters. And how do we find the number of moles of magnesium chloride? Well, we go to our handy dandy periodic table, grab a molecular weight, 235 grams of magnesium chloride. We know that for every 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride, that's equivalent to one mole of magnesium chloride, it says that in this solution, there would be equal to, there would be 2.47 times 10 to the negative third moles of magnesium chloride. Well, that is now dissolved in, dissolved in 250 mils. So I'm going to do a quick black magic. This is 0 0.250 liters. All right. All right. So we put our 0 0.2 liters and we now have the units we now have the units moles per liter or molarity so that number that comes out should have the units 9.87 times 10 to the negative third molar magnesium chloride so what is the molarity what is the concentration? Find the number of moles divided by the number of liters. Done. Now, where we have to be cautious is sometimes the liters we start with isn't the liter we end up with. Like when you mix solutions, take one solution, you add it on another one. That's right, something to keep in mind. The other part of this question, what is the chloride ion solution? So what is the chloride ion concentration? Now, well, we could do the whole calculation again, but once we know the ion concentration of one, we can figure out the ion concentration of the other. For every 9.87 times 10 to the minus third magnesium chloride, it's equivalent to saying moles per liter molarity. We know that for every one mole of magnesium chloride, that is equivalent to two moles of chloride. And then out pops the answer in molarity and moles cancel, leaving us moles per liter or molarity. Not surprising, 1.97 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter chloride ion concentration. So the molarity of the chloride ion concentration is twice as much as the molarity of the magnesium ion concentration in this case. Now, how would you make a solution? Now, this is a real problem. This is real. Go to the lab. Boss says, I need a 300 mils of a 0.3 molar iron plus 3 solution. You don't go into the solution. You don't go in there and you grab 0.3 moles of my magnesium. You pop it into a liter and you dilute. All right, that's not, no. All right, we, do it, we do it a different way. We do the exact calculation. We predict how much iron we need in this situation. <clears throat> so this is the opposite. How would you make a solution with, we actually use the information embedded in molarity and volume to answer the, the question. So in this case, we need a 300 milliliter solution that's 0.3 molars. We can use the definition of molarity. We can take this 300 mils and convert that into 0.300 liters. 
And then we know that for every one liter, that is equivalent to 0 0.300 moles of iron three. Again, this is just our molarity statement. Moles per liter. Out would come an answer that says that we would need to get 9 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of Fe plus 3. Yay! Well, go out and find me 9 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of iron plus 3. You can't do it, all right? It's because it's never just iron plus 3. The iron plus 3 is always paired with something. And so you go into the lab and you find some iron nitrate or some iron chloride. And then you have to find 9 times 10 to the minus to convert this moles into grams of each of these using your standard technique. And then what do you do? You take that iron solution, iron salt, plop it down into water, dilute it up to 300 mils until the concentration is good, and then you're golden. So that's how to calculate a molarity and how to make solutions.